the shoreline of Europe. Here we see a nest of hatchlings, and this is their mother, Asteriornis, a type of shoreline bird. The chicks are well camouflaged, but she knows where they are. The chicks need constant brooding to survive in the open landscape. This is her mate calling for the domain of his territory. But such open nests are hard to keep safe from passing predators. An ashtarchid pterosaur, two meters tall, a threat to the chicks. But something takes interest of the pterosaur. The female appears injured. The Ashtarkid's interest is piqued. An injured female surely will be an easy meal. So the Ashtarkid follows her. But interestingly, the female isn't injured. This is a display to distract the pterosaur, to lure it away from the chicks. And when the pterosaur has been lured far enough from the nest, the female will bolt, leaving the pterosaur to its tracks, and the brood is safe for now. The forests of East Asia. In the tree, there is a peculiar object. It is a nest, and this is the creature that built it, and an anteo, a type of bird common in this part of the world. It is a male, and he has carefully constructed this nest that will one day how's his offspring. But before that, he must showcase his nest to the female, and he does that by display. <coughs> Such display is to make females take notice of the nest and hopefully help him find a mate. But females are not the only creatures in this forest. Oh dear. A hadrosaur. Hadrosaurs are effective plant eaters. <coughs> they have large tooth batteries with which they are able to chew and quickly process tough plant matter like conifer leaves and branches. It could easily destroy the nest even without even noticing. For the male, a destroyed nest means no chance of finding a mate. Time to be bold. The male takes bold action. It dive bombs the hadrosaur to chew it away from his nest and drive it off. The hadrosaur moves on to find a more peaceful place to eat. For the Anantior, peace has returned and he can move on to his display. shoreline of the high arctic of north america the hillside is littered with burrows and in these burrows lives something remarkable these are young hesperonis no more than a few days old these are their parents they are out at sea and calling for them the chicks will not be fed on land. They must travel to sea, an arduous journey of a hundred meters. It's not easy when you are quite clumsy on land. As one wave, chicks from all over the shoreline burrows rush to the sea to answer the call of their parents. But at this short trip, is dangerous. A dromaeosaur. She has been waiting for such an opportunity for a long time. Not all chicks make it to the shore. The female's territory is situated just at the colony, and she has fed upon these chicks for a long time. And now a feast is to be had in these shorelines. She has even synchronized her breeding cycle to match that of this event, so that her chicks will have the best chance at life. 
the chicks still continue their journey despite all the danger. And at last, some of them arrive at the sea. <coughs> they call with their parents, and at last, they are at sea. They won't set foot on land for five years. They are fed at sea by their parents, and they move on from southwards towards more productive waters in the south, following great ocean currents. This truly is the most pelagic bird to have ever existed. They move on towards the south, leaving behind the animals of the north to face the winter. The shorelines of Antarctica. In the shallows near offshore islands, plesiosaurs are on the move. These are Aristonectes, one of the largest plesiosaurs that has ever existed, 40 feet long. But these giants have a peculiar problem. Their skin is riddled with parasites, which not only causes them irritation and itching, it also makes it harder for them to swim. But these oceanic giants have an unlikely alliance. This is Vegalis, a type of seabird common in these Antarctic waters. They have spotted the Aristonectes and know that there is food to be had. Being opportunistic, they waste no time. They dive downward to reach the Aristonectes and start eating the parasites off its skin. For the plesiosaur, it's time to relax. After a good cleaning, the plesiosaur dives deeper and the Vagavis have to abandon their banquet. So they move on. To see the science behind the stories, go now to the prehistoric planet Chopin.